Hey there, so today I want to return to the wonderful world of video games, and I want to talk about a little video game journalism here, and something that I found to be quite laughable. I mean, when you look at video game journalism as is, fewer and fewer people actually listen to what anybody says there. I mean, when's the last time you actually checked out a video game review? You know, when you went in and you thought, hey, I'm going to look at, say, a waypoint. I'm going to go in and I'm going to listen to the people there because they probably know what they're doing. Now, if you were to listen to them, you know, as a player or more so as a video game designer, this is the kind of stuff they would throw out for Resident Evil 2. Now, when I'm talking about Resident Evil as well, I feel like I'm pretty knowledgeable on that series. I mean, that umbrella guy, this thing had an indelible impact on my life. You know, when I go out and I think about the way that I want a video game, I think back to Resident Evil 1 becoming Resident Evil 2 back in the day, and wow, I mean, that thing, it just, it truly shaped my video gaming experience. So when I look at that new Resident Evil, when I looked at that updated graphics and on, you know, I enjoyed a lot of things. I mean, there were nitpicks here and there, like where the liquor is positioned, for example. I like the idea, but, you know, that scare there, that original scare, yeah, nothing compares to that feeling. Still, overall, it's nitpicking. I love that freaking game. And these people here, well, they found a way not to love it. So if there were video game designers out there listening to these folks, they wouldn't be asked for another item. They wouldn't be asked for something else to, say, play around with or for maybe uh, new types of zombies or for different scarcity experiences. No, what these folks want is they want to be a more compassionate hero. Now, when looking at that, it's exactly how it sounds. You know, this person complains about their involvement in the video game because, hey, they go to a police station. And police stations isn't that absurd anyway. Because what type of person expects safety from a police station? I mean, after all, ism. After all, taking away from people. That's literally what they go into. Then they complain about taking items from staging points, you know, this rescue area, because essentially what they're saying is, I'd like to go out and save people. Well, you know what happened to the people that tried to save other people in Resident Evil? They all got turned. That's the problem there. If you look around and you look at people that tried to help out, yeah, they had a lot of problem when it came down to it. That's not to say that you haven't tried to help people. This person, they try to say that the interaction is limited at that. But think about Ada Wong, for example. Yeah, you didn't try to help out. You didn't try to bring the whole thing down, did you? I mean, you were just a selfish jackass the whole time. Isn't that fun? But anyhow, I don't want to ruin it all for you. Let's check this out. And you know, this hit me right in the fee-fees, too. I mean, and it would have to, because if you were an internet designer, and it didn't hit you back in the fee-fees, then what exactly are you going to put in your belly? Because if you're going to listen to these people, you got a lot of starving, so I hope you can eat virtue. I hope you can swallow it down and get full on it. Uh, because unless it hits like a tapeworm, you're pretty much screwed. But anyhow, let's get into it. So this person starts out, and they talk about how, you know, back in the day, they did a lot of stuff at 14 years old. To get familiar with it, they went through tips and tricks. They went through to beat every plot point and on. They were familiar. But this time, it was the, the only time that they've truly experienced it. What they're talking about here, you know, it's, it's scary, tense, very much a period piece, a late 90s survival horror game, now boasting some modern design niceties. Play on normal, I can save as many times as I like, cut scene and visuals are pretty up to the RE7 standards. But the one thing that sticks out to them still early on is basically when they're saying the, the game uses scarcity, it uses hyper competence that makes them feel a certain way. How much per, uh, permission it gives me to be a total a-hole. The loner survival type. How the fantasy here presents an uncomfortable tension between the way I want to role play in this world versus the way the game requires me to play to make it through the night. 
Again, you know, it's amazing here. They want to pretend that, hey, if it were set up a different way, if you were trying to save people and on, that would just be fun. That would be so great, wouldn't it? Oh, that would be a terrible game. I mean, as is, you know, I have to uh, go out and shoot zombies to keep myself alive. Wouldn't I just love an escort mission? Going and saving people because, hey... Yeah, wouldn't that be great? God, I hate escort missions. So, continuing on, they talk about, as I stalk through the halls, dressed as they are in intermittent fluorescent lights and weird sepia tones of an old museum, I'm vulnerable. I don't have many bullets to protect myself with. I have far fewer healing items. Zombies are tough. Even on normal, they take multiple headshots, and they often don't stay down. I have to raid this place to survive. And they talk about where it is, what they pick up, gunpowder, and even knickknacks to solve the items. Crappy uh, boards even have to be picked up, uh, put onto windows to keep the riffraff out, as the items tooltip tells. At first, I oddly felt a little weird taking things. The station was designed as a shelter during a zombie outbreak. There are cots and bloody sheets, IV stands, boxes of food and medical supplies everywhere. Early on, protagonists Claire and Leon hear a radio message instructing all citizens to head for the station. Yeah, how many people do you actually see in there? I mean, when you get down to it, how many people were sitting there that you're taking supplies away from? There's your question. What you find are you find a lot of zombies, a lot of police people that have basically fortified themselves in. You find some stragglers here and there. You know, basically, you're told that things, they went from bad outside to worse inside. But continuing on there, that notion is wild that a police station as fortress slash safe haven, Laughably naive, particularly for people of color. There it is, particularly for people of color. It certainly was in the 90s as well. And really, when has policing in America ever actually been about keeping neighborhoods safe as opposed to keeping a racist status quo up and running? This is exactly why people do not listen to video game journalists. And Danielle, may I call you Danielle? This is why your position out there it becomes less and less relevant over time because you can't understand why exactly this does not belong in a review of Resident Evil. But continuing on here, though the game does later connect the upper echelons of the police management with evil, shady doings of the Umbrella Corporation, whose decidedly unethical bioweapons research started the whole zombie apocalypse in the first place. Well, at least there's that, right? At least you're putting the police in their place. I mean, seriously. So this person, they start out with the, I still feel bad, uh, a little bad about looting the place, at least at first, since it's a staging area for what we in EMA call a mass casualty incident. Now, right here, I guess I could have felt a whinge of understanding about why this person would have put this out there if they wouldn't have put all of this together and they wouldn't have whined about the police and on. You know, EMS, too. I don't know how exactly they separate themselves from the police. I mean, if you go out and you look at the SJW narratives about this stuff, yeah, you know, they don't give a break to the EMS officers either. They consider them just as bad. So, you know, when you're talking about this, well, unfortunately, for most people out there, you're talking about yourself, too. I hate that for you. But, man, you know, you're probably self-hating anyway. But continuing. So, of course, I was in I was in thinking like EMT. Look for survivors like the nice dude who saves me from faulty door Marvin, who is clearly suffering from some kind of awful one. I want to help him. Claire wants to help him, too, exclaiming that we need to get him to the hospital, but he refuses. And the game doesn't give me any tools for mending wounds or even putting gauze or bandages on something. The only first aid items are hilarious magical herbs and sprays, though the guns and blood look, well, more or less like the actual thing. Oh, man, so we needed to actually have to treat real wounds, too. Oh, man, you know, do not do this. Please do not make me take gauze. Do not make me actually wrap my leg and on if it gets broken. Oh, that would be terrible. I would hate to think of the setup for survival to this. And again, if you try to start saving people like that, you know what you end up? You end up dead in video games. This isn't the way it plays. And really, think about the zombies. Do you want to end up wasting bullets, you know? 
know, 12 of them going on for a few zombies in a hallway. So you can save somebody that's going to run around. And again, you're going to have to take them back to base because, hey, fetch quests. But continuing. And after a while, I suddenly give in to the goofy logic. Goofy logic there. Yes, I absolutely need this green plant because seven more zombies will try to eat my face before I'm done uh, on this floor. Yes, I definitely need a pers uh, personal lock combination because I need that ammo. It's clear that I'm the only real agent in this world. It's designed around me my needs so i have permission to loot and run just smashing the x button to try and uh drive by pick up items there's no one else here really it's a world all for me and i'm allowed to do anything i gd well please i mean you see how they're trying to give that emphasis to make this sound bad to treat it all like my own shitty playground no need to treat it this way if I want to progress. And I'm uh, morally allowed to. Because I'm not hurting anyone else. Anyone who's alive anyway. Because scarcity doesn't affect anyone else in the real world. Oh my god. Oh, this stuff. So cringy. So good in there in so many different ways. I mean, does it uh, matter to Marvin, or Leon for that matter, during my Claire playthrough, if I use every healing item on myself? No. But if I barely have a scratch on me, I can still walk right up to where Marvin is bleeding out of his abdomen and spray myself with magic healing green shit with no consequences. I can use every bullet for myself. I am the only thing I need to worry about for much of the game. I know there's a side quest later on that complicates this, but for now, this is just another thing. I'm permitting, uh, permitted to be selfish. Oh my god. You know, it's so bad. So they go on through there. They talk about how bad this is, you know. And they, when they're talking about it, too, it's, it's kind of interesting. You know, they, uh, they talk about, look at all the goofy fake labels and such, like I do in a Life is, uh, Life is Strange game or Walking Sim. That's a very different sort of permission fantasy, isn't it? The ability to touch and play with so many aspects of the world, with no angry shopkeepers staring at me from an ob very obviously queer haircut. Man, look at there. We get more identity. So we got ism, we got identity politics, and, you know, we're a monster. Because video games, you know, we're we're out, we're uh, showcasing antisocial behaviors, stealing shit, shooting antagonists in the face, stabbing them, trying to uh, get them to walk halfway and door so I can headshot them. I can interact with survivors sometime, but it's in a very prescripted way. <laughs> Oh, man. So, and no, this design paradigm is nothing new. This is a survival horror game, doing the kind of things that genre does. It's not making me feel powerful so much as hyper-competent and allowed to do bad things. It's a terrible world, and I have to survive. RE2 successfully put me in the mindset inside of its first hour from the sort of player who usually loves to admire every tiny detail and art set to a grabby, selfish, grizzled jerk. Not even Aliens Isolation did that to me. I've stopped playing this game like an EMT the way I started, concerned about medical supplies and survivors, and more like a lone commando, the other hole who lives to fight another day, me versus the world. Now, you don't really think about that. You don't really think like that when you play, do you? Seriously, you know what kind of game you're going to get into. You know that you're not going to be able to save people because, again, you know about the game that it was based on. So when you stepped into this game, what the hell are you complaining about? What do you have to go in and actually find wrong here? I mean, it's a, it's kind of, like I say, it's kind of amazing to see this kind of complaint because in real life, I carry a tourniquet, exam gloves, and gauze everywhere I go. But do your characters do that? See, that's the thing. You know, you talk about role-playing in something. Well, you're role-playing. You're playing these characters in a limited world. You're not playing self. If you were playing self, ah, you know, it might be an interesting game, but at the end of the day, you'd probably have somebody shoot you while you're going out because other people would be playing themselves too. Or, more likely, while you're out there, you know, trying to administer some kind of healing with your, uh, with your actual gloves instead of your magic herb and on where you're wrapping people's legs and stuff like that, yeah, you'd end up dead. 
That's what would have happened. You'd end up dead. But no, they keep a little kit right inside my real life purse just in case I need to go somewhere. I've had to use it before as a passerby to an assault. I think we never needed to use my supplies in a zombie outbreak. Not yet. But I'd like to think in my heart of hearts that I'd be a different kind of survivor than Claire and Leon are really allowed to be in RE2. You know, because we need to be more compassionate in video games. Oh, God. I'm trying to envision the RE2 that they create. And I think that, like I say, I think I've got it broken down. Basically, it would be an armada of fetch quests. We would be bored out of our you know, skulls. And at the end of the day, we wouldn't be talking about something better. We would be talking about something much, much more boring. But you, you tell me what you think. I mean, do you see some redeeming qualities? quality in this do you want to go and save survivors do you want to go out and patch up the wounded stack them up high and maybe while you're at it maybe you could go and find a different type of building maybe we could find the sjw pantheon because ism because phobia because whatever else we can add you know because they hey why not i mean why not but anyhow you tell me what you think if you like this kind of content, sub to the channel. Hit that sucker. Hit it good. Also, if you want to go further than that, well, like what you like. Check out the links in the description. Basically, say to the world, man, I love you, Umbrella. Leave your comments, too. I actually like looking through the comments there. I always enjoy doing that. So leave your comments. Good, bad, ugly, don't really care. You know, just like the Clint Eastwood version out there. I enjoy that. Yep, enjoy it very well. And I want to end this saying that i appreciate you you make this channel what it is so i want to thank you for showing up so thank you sincerely i appreciate you and well we'll do it again another day thanks